Welcome back to the RE Agent Podcast. My name is Vikram Diol. I built a $250 million real estate business. I help real estate agents, new and old, build their business to have the success that they want. As a new agent, there are things that you don't know that you don't know. Your brokerage doesn't have the bandwidth to teach you, and you just are kind of out on your own. If you're a new agent or you're an agent that's having some challenges, I believe there's some easy wins for you. And here they are. The first thing is, is that I'm a true believer that skills are passed from one person to the next. You should join a team. You should have a mentor and you should have a coach. You should also have a mastermind group. As a new agent, the more information you're able to absorb while you're fresh and you're excited and you're enthusiastic, the more likely you're going to be successful. Joining a team is not as easy as just Hey, they sell a lot of houses. I know a lot of teams out there that sell a lot of homes, but it's two or three people out of a 20 person team. The reason why joining the right team is important is because there's a few things that you need as a new agent. One, you need to make sure that they are able to transfer the knowledge from the leaders and the sales experts on the team down to you. There's a lot of technical things in real estate. You have to be able to see, to experience, to learn. So making sure that your team has structure for you is super, super important. The second thing that you wanna make sure your team has is, do they have leads, right? As a new agent, the hardest thing for you to do is acquire new clients. So do they have enough leads in their pipeline? Do they generate enough leads? Can they teach you how to fish and how to catch the fish and reel it in? Or is it like, hey, we're gonna let you use our name and then you go figure it out from there. If that's the case, and you're new and you're already struggling with thinking about where do I get my next deal from, that's probably not a good team for you. Some teams that don't have great training will give you a higher split, but remember, if the split's 80% and you do zero deals, you still made zero. So it's better to go to a team that might take a little bit more off the top, but they provide you with so much more resources. Second thing is when you pick a team, make sure you like the people there. You shouldn't be spending a lot of time there. You should be in the office. You should be shadowing. You should be like a little puppy just chasing everybody down to learn. And if you don't like the people, you're not gonna wanna show up. So make sure you like the people that are on the team so that you want to spend more time with them. The next thing is, is when you pick a team is you wanna make sure that they have a great reputation, right? Joining a team that does a lot of business, but they're known for overpricing, they're known for cutting their commissions, they're known for you know shady practices, might not be who you wanna be associated with. I know that I wouldn't wanna be associated with a shady team, right? I want our team to be above water, I want people to respect us, I want us to do a good job, I want us to be out there always taking care of our clients and our team members and the people that service our team or the vendors that we work with. Make sure that your, your team has a good reputation. So the fourth tip is that it's not all about the commission, right? Don't worry about commission splits. I had people come to me and they said, Vikram, I want an 80, 20 split. I said, great. The broker's office is three doors down. You're more than welcome to talk to him. And they said, no, I want it from you. I said, well, you little, little cockroach. I mean, little grasshopper. What do you bring to my company? We're already established, we have leads, we have presence, people know about us, we have training, we have support, we have transaction coordinators, we have marketing in-house. What are you gonna bring to my organization that you deserve more than my top agent who made over $200,000 in his first year with us and he never once complained about split? Why do you believe you deserve more? And it's a solid real estate answer. Well, I'm the best at what I do. And I said, I'm sure you are, cockroach grasshopper. I'm sure you are. See, when people only talk about splits, that means they're only out for themselves. So team leaders, be careful about that. And to the grasshopper that thinks you're worth more, prove it. Go do a ton of business. Go make your team lead life amazing. And then ask for more money. And I'll guarantee you, if you're making a couple hundred thousand bucks, you're not gonna need more money. If your team is providing you with services like leads and training and coaching and mentoring and transaction coordination and assistance 
and answering your questions in the heat of the moment, you're not going to want to leave them. Making you feel good, right? Teaching you how to run a business, you're not going to want to leave them. Most teams don't provide that, which is why people want more money because they're like, what am I giving 30, 40, 50, 60% of the commission up for? So just as much as you are a new agent, some of the teams are new teams and they're not going to provide you the same quality of service that you might want for the money you could potentially pay them. And the fifth, make sure that when you join a team as a new agent, you are super, 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 super humble. Learn everything, right? Show up to everything. Be a sponge. Be the agent that wants to learn and doesn't want to tell everybody how to do their job. I'll tell you a quick story. We had a client that had an agent. And every time we had a coaching call, the first 20 minutes of the coaching call, my client would bitch about the agent. Oh my God, they just don't ever shut up. They think they know everything. They make so many mistakes, blah, 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 blah. After the first call, I was like, okay, well, what, what do we want to do? I don't know. Okay, well, let's talk about it. We talked about it. We came up with a plan. Second call, they didn't execute the plan. Blah, 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 blah. And imagine these are happening day in and day out. Every day they go home complaining about this person but they don't want to do anything. Don't be that person. Be the agent that your team leads like, oh my God, Paul is so amazing. I freaking love him. He is so helpful. He does so much extra. He shows up on time. He's at our role place. He always offers to bring coffee for people. He does open houses. He cleans up the dog poop in the backyard. He never complains. He's dressed well. He smells great. His breath doesn't stink. He has nice deodorant on. Be that person. Don't be the agent that's like, oh my God, he's always late, always wants to tell us how great he is, but doesn't do shit. That's not the agent you want to be. Tip number two, when you are a brand new agent, be in it for the long haul. Real estate's tough. It will break you. It is not home garden TV. It is not million dollar listing. It is not easy. And it is super, super, super tough. You need to be in this for the long haul. You need to be prepared financially to not close a deal for maybe six months to a year, right? Imagine if you had to support yourself for six months to a year. Could you do that? Real estate is one of the only industries where you can get into for practically zero dollars. But just because you can get into it for zero dollars doesn't mean you need zero dollars to be a, an expert. It doesn't mean you need zero dollars to survive. You need to be able to withstand three to six months of no sales. You should right out the gate, have a budget for coaching and mentorship. You should right out the gate, have a budget for leads and marketing. You should right out the gate, be prepared with your CRM and some tools to get you to where you want to be. I've met so many agents that get into the business and I'm like, you know, why are you using the company open house signs? Like, why are you branding Remax or why are you branding Keller Williams or Coldwell Banker? Why are you branding your broker? Like, well, I don't have open house signs. I'm like, you don't got 300 bucks to go get six or seven signs? Nope. You don't got 300 bucks? What are you going to do if you don't sell a house for three months? So what are you going to do month six when you haven't closed a deal if you can't afford the $300 signs? You can't afford the $100 business cards, right? So be prepared to have 15, 10, $15,000 ready saved before you think about becoming a real estate agent. Don't become a real estate agent because it's your last resort. Become a real estate agent because you have proven success in other industries and you want to sell real estate because it's an awesome product to sell. You get to sell the dream of home ownership. You get to sell the dream of Christmas. Don't do it because you think you're going to make a bunch of money because most real estate agents make less than a McDonald's full-time employee. And the third thing you need to have ready as a brand new agent is you need to create a list of everybody you know in your city. Every email address you can find, every phone number you can find, and be ready right out the gate to start contacting these people and letting them know that you're in real estate, you're on a professional team, you have support, you partnered with so-and-so, and they're going to be there every step of the way, and then sit back and watch your team lead or watch the sales expert on your team do their job. Don't try to be the know-it-all. Don't try to do everything. You set the appointment and then let somebody else take over so that you get to learn and get paid to learn with your people. Because your people are gonna be like, wow, this is an amazing experience. And there will be things you get to do, but if you become a hairstylist, it takes you 2,000 hours of on-the-job training before you can go out and cut somebody's hair on your own. 
you need to put in the time. You need to put in the effort. And guess what? Hairstylists, when they're in school, because I dated a, a girl when I was in college that was becoming a hairstylist, she kept asking me, can I cut your hair? Can I cut your hair? And I'm like, babe, you're really hot and I enjoy having sex with you. But like, people have to look at me. Like, what if you screw up? She's like, I'm not gonna screw up. There's people there to watch the entire time. She's like, plus, if you wanna have sex with me, you need to let me cut your hair. And I'm like, I guess I'm gonna let you cut my hair then. <laughs> so it's okay when you're brand new to not want to be the star. It's okay to learn. One of my top agents, he sat in 20 or 30 appointments and said nothing, nothing. And finally, after like 20 appointments, I was like, hey man, when do you, when do you feel like you're ready to take on the appointment? He's like, I wanted to watch a couple more. He's like, I enjoy watching you do what you do. Like you're really good at it. You've honed in this presentation that you're really good with people. He's like, I need to practice a little bit more. He's like, do you think we could role play like a couple of hours this weekend so that I'm ready next week? And we have like seven more appointments lined up that week. And I was like, yeah, for sure. The first appointment he did, I sat in on the appointment and I watched him and I was amazed because he did a better job than I did because he studied so much and he did so many appointments with people that he knew as well. So be ready. Just like the hairstylists had to find their own clients be ready with your own clients to bring to the table of your new team because then you're going to have business right out the gate and you're going to have quick wins. The quicker you can have wins as a new agent, the more chances you have for long-term success. So I hope this helps you guys. Remember, there's a couple of tips that are really important when it comes to picking a right team. And I think that if you don't choose a team, you will have a bigger disadvantage than advantage. I truly believe that trying to keep 100% of the commission is absolutely ridiculous. Going with the cheapest brokerage in town is absolutely ridiculous. And that you need to really start thinking about your future. Because what if you don't make a sale? 800,000 real estate agents out of 1.4 million registered agents did not make a sale in the last 12 months. That is more than half, ladies and gentlemen. And I get it. We all think we're the greatest in the world at what we do. But we are about to go into some super tough times and I want to see you win. So be ready for it.